President Bush returned to the White House Sunday from his weekend at Camp David. His decision to commit some 28,000 ground forces to the East African nation was made, his aides say, after top Pentagon planners assured him the U.S. could get the job done relatively quickly with minimal casualties. Officials say the U.S. mission is to set the stage for the smooth distribution of food. They're going to do a humanitarian, they're, they're providing a gift, if you will, they're giving to somebody who can't give to themselves. And that's what the spirit of Christmas is all about anyway. I'm very proud and very glad that they're going over to do this. Plus, we're going to miss them a lot. It's like push out to make, you know, there are people starving to death. And, you know, what, what good is it if I'm sitting home and I'm trying to enjoy myself and I know that there's people like that in the world? What I've seen with the, uh, on the news broadcasting thing, and I've seen the uh, people laying around and not getting food, it's not right. I think we need to help. So how do you feel? Not good. <laughs> Why? I'm worried. A program note, we'll focus on developments in Somalia in our special coverage, Saving Somalia. You can watch at 3.30 Eastern this afternoon and 10.30 p.m. Eastern tonight. Six minutes past the hour. The new U.S. Congress is getting itself organized. The House Democrats and Republicans begin a week of meetings today to pick leaders, make committee assignments, that's key, and adopt procedural rules. Few changes are expected in the House leadership of either party. President-elect Bill Clinton heads for Washington today, where he will meet with Senate and House Committee Chairman and court the 110 freshman House members. In the meantime, sources say the leading candidates to be Clinton's budget director are Congressman Leon Panetta, the House Budget Committee Chairman, and economist Alice Rivlin, former director of the Congressional Budget Office. Well, later this week, Clinton is expected to nominate Senator Lloyd Benson as his Treasury Secretary and investment banker Roger Altman as Benson's deputy. En route to Washington today, the president-elect will stop in Chicago to meet with some vocational education students. CNN will provide live coverage at 12.15 p.m. Eastern. Well, it was anchors away to get the space shuttle Discovery crew going this morning. The song played was for two Naval Academy graduates who were aboard. The astronauts have successfully tested a laser system to beam up navigation data from the ground. Discovery is scheduled to land Wednesday, but bad weather could delay that. Is U.S. involvement in Somalia viewed as an intrusion? Will U.S. participation be limited to famine relief, or are there long-range needs for peacekeeping? Our guests will provide some perspective on the U.S. role in saving Somalia. That's coming up on CNN Morning News. To admit, I'm a little surprised. About what? I just never thought I'd see you in anything but a BMW or a Lexus. Me neither. Airbag? Leather? This is quality. Expensive? About 10, 15,000 less than the BMW or Lexus. I think it feels just as good. <laughs> what? Oh, there's Pontiac Bonneville. It's amazing. Delta, we 
love to fly, and it shows the world over. I can't remember. It was something, something. Nicoderm. Nicotine transdermal system. Yeah, it's called Nicoderm. Yeah, yeah, the patch. Nicoderm, huh? Yeah, it's a patch. Nicoderm. Derm. Derm. By prescription only. Hundreds of people are dying each day in Somalia, and the U.S. has taken the lead in an effort to bring relief. CNN gives you the complete story with half-hour live specials twice a day. Saving Somalia at 3.30 and 10.30, weekdays on CNN. The first U.S. troops are expected to set foot in Somalia tomorrow for what's being called a mission of mercy. They will ensure that food reaches the starving people. What impact will this mission have on Somalia's future? And what does the United States stand to gain from this effort? Joining us from Washington is Chester Crocker, a former Assistant Secretary for African Affairs. And we want to remind you that, folks, uh, you will be able to call in with your phone calls for Mr. Crocker and Brent Sadler, who is our correspondent in Mogadishu, along with Wolf Blitzer, who is at the White House. And that will be in just a couple of minutes. Mr. Crocker, welcome to you. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. For eight years, you were the Assistant Secretary of State for African Affairs. Do you see that the U.S. troops are going to be uh, going in for a short amount of time? Can you give us an assessment of how long you think it will take for, for the, the short-term goal of getting the food to the starving? No, I think that is a fairly short-term proposition. It seems to me there's no reason why this can't be accomplished in a matter of a few weeks or maybe a month or two to get things uh, restored so that there's security around the camps and feeding stations, security for convoys, and so that the balance of, of forces, the balance of power locally, uh, uh, favors the humanitarian side of the equation rather than those, those who are living by the gun, which is what we've been facing up to now. Okay, you talk about the balance of power, and is it, uh, I heard later today that there are something like seven major warlords in Somalia, uh, a couple of major ones that we have been talking about, and some are cooperating. Do you see that cooperation as, as standing after the U.S. troops leave, and do you think it could be jockeying for power? Oh, this is all about power, and it's about the distribution of, uh, of wealth and income. Uh, you have a situation where food has become a principal a store of value, and living by the gun assures uh, a, a significant amount of food comes into the hands of your people. But in the future, if that balance of power can be changed, as we're trying to do, I think you can see that the balance tilts now towards a political process and getting uh, going some kind of constitutional dialogue amongst the key political brokers. And that includes some of these clan leaders, but it also includes uh, clan elders and traditional political party chiefs and so forth who must get around a round table at some point. U.S. Ambassador to Kenya, Smith Hempstone, says if you like Beirut, you'll love Mogadishu. Is that a possibility that we could turn into another Beirut? I don't think there's any comparison. I disagree with that analysis. Uh, Mogadishu is a rough town. It has long been a rough town. Uh, guns have been available for many years. What's different now is there's no, there's no government. There's no civil power. And what this intervention is all about is creating space to restore a civil power. And it has to be done step by step. But I just don't see uh, the issues as being anything comparable to the kinds of difficulty that we and others have run into in a place like Lebanon. There is no uh, ideological crusade. There is no religious crusade. Uh, most of the people carrying guns are basically uh, looking at those guns as, a, as their standard of living, their means of livelihood. Mr. Crocker, if you'll just stay there for a quick minute, we want to take it to Mogadishu and our correspondent Brent Sadler there. Brent?